Okay, so here's the last thing that Lurie talked about, which is really cool. Um, it's a theorem, I think, first stated by Fermat, but I think, I think it was proved later, um, probably by Gauss or Euler. I'm not sure. But it says every prime, if, the, if a prime is one more than a multiple of four, then, then it can be written in the form of two squares. Yep. A squared plus B squared. <coughs> and so there's only three possibilities for primes. They're either one more than a multiple of four. And then one. Three more than a multiple of four or one less than yeah. a multiple of four. Or what's the third possibility? Or all or no all two more than a multiple of four. Or two more than a multiple of four. What are, list can you list all the primes for me that are two more than a multiple of four? Two. <laughs> two. Now two can it be written as the sum of two well, squares? One squared plus one squared. So one squared plus one squared. So <laughs> this case isn't all that interesting. These are like Pythagorean triangles. Some of them. Well, except that this isn't squared. It's not p squared is a squared plus b squared. It's p equals a squared plus b squared. Mm. So 2 is sort of a weird case. Yeah. But let's look at some other primes. 3, 5, 7, 11, 13. 3 would be 4n plus 3. Mm. Can we write 3 as a sum of squares? Well, there's some of integer squares. Integer squares, yeah. No, you, I don't think you can. Doesn't look like it. Because 1 squared is 1 and 2 squared is too big. What about 5? Well, 5, can, you can write it as 1, one the squared plus 2 squared. Okay. 7 is 3 more than a multiple of 4. Well, can we write it as a sum of squares? Doesn't look like it since 3 squared is too big. You need, you need a 2 squared and then you need a 3. Yeah, so it doesn't seem like this works. X. 11 is also 3 more than a multiple of 3. Can you find any squares? Well, you can... Uh, it, not, you can use... I don't, I don't think you can use it. Doesn't look like this works. What about 13? That's one more. According to Fermat, you should be able to do it. Well, 3 squared plus 2 squared. 3 squared plus 2 squared. Okay. I'm not going to prove this. I'm not going to prove that every prime and 4n plus 1 can be written as a sum of two squares. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to prove that if it's 4n plus 3... You can't do it. You can't, because that's a little bit easier. Yeah. Okay? What clock do you think we should use? Maybe uh, a clock with, of a 7 clock, because it's 3 more than a multiple of 4. Well, what's the important number over here? Well, the 4. The 4. So I'm going to use a base 4 clock. Let's use a base 4 clock. So we have a 0, a oh, 1, a, two, a 2, and a 3. And, a three. Okay, and let's look at the squares. 0 squared is what? Is 0. 0. 1 squared is? Is 1. 1. 1 times 1 is 1. What about 2 squared? 2 one. squared, it, it would be? You have 1, 2, and you have 1, 2. So 2 squared would be 0. 0. Interesting. 2 squared is 0. What about 3 squared? 3 squared, there would be no, there would be 1, because you have 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. So the 1. Huh. So okay. it looks like the even squares have zeros. So the even squares have zeros and the odd squares are 1s. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if I have a prime that's of the form 4n plus 3, what's that going to be on my clock? Well, that, that's going to be the 3. That's going to be the 3. Can I get two squares that add up to 3? No. You Why not? Because four, 2 squared is too big, and then you need 3 1 squares. Okay. All I have with my squares are zeros and 1s. Okay. You don't have 2s or 3s. Don't have 2s or 3s. And if, can I get it to add up to 3? With just 2. And the answer is no. No. Because the most I can add up to is two. Yeah. So you can see why four n plus three never works. Because you you just can't add up to three. Now you notice also that you can add up to one. All you need is a zero and a one. one. 
And you see we always had an even and an odd. Even and an odd. Okay? The surprise that tells you you might be able to do it. The surprising thing is you can always do it. So let's pick another one, a bigger one, just as an example. Um, say 31, no, 37. 37. Okay, so here's a challenge. Can we write 37 as a sum of two squares? Well, it's six, it's six squared plus one squared. Oh, man. Okay, was that too easy? Yeah. Let's, well, we could try... Let's try a bigger one. Well, how about... How about four. 73? Is 73 prime? I think it. Yeah. Okay. So we'll try to write 73 as the sum of two squares. Well, 73 can be written as it's 8 squared plus 3 squared. See? Mm -hmm. so you can always do it. Yeah. But uh, the proof is a little too hard. I, I looked at it last night and thought, well, a little easier to show why you can never do 4 and plus 3. But this is pretty cool. So Jacob Lurie, as I said, is one of the top mathematicians in the world. He just won this huge prize for his work. And when he wants to talk to the public about math, he talks about these number systems and clocks and all these neat things you can do with clock arithmetic. Pretty fun, right? Yeah. yeah. Alright. Good job, guys. Good job.